So, uh, yeah, my name is Connor. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I've been sober for about three, a little over three years. And uh, it was through Willamette Family, actually, where I got sober this last time. I gave up on music for a long time ago. Um, my, dr my dream and my goal growing up was always to be a musician. I grew up in, you know, suburban USA and, um, and I was happy. You know, I did struggle a lot with anxiety growing up. Um, but I wouldn't have considered that like the reason uh, for, for starting using and drinking. Basically when I was 15, my family moved from California to, to Wyoming and you know, I had just started 10th grade. For me that affected me um, because then I had to make new friends and, and so one thing that I found there was that the people who were into music and, and especially the whole like punk rock scene which is sort of what I was into at the time was uh, people like to smoke weed and drink and stuff and ultimately you know if you're gonna spend enough time around people or anything like that you're gonna end up doing the same things, especially at, at that uh, vulnerable age, you know. And it didn't take long, however, for that to start to, to get out of control. Um, I gave up playing music. Um, I thought that maybe I wasn't even that talented. Um, I considered myself a full-blown alcoholic by the time I was 19. I got my first DUI when I was 21. It was a big deal, It was, but it was whatever. But when I was 26, I got a second DUI, or 25 maybe I was, and then I actually got a third DUI within about three or four months of that other one. And that's when I sort of had to take a step back <clears throat> and really take a look at what the problem was. Um, I ended up going to a, a treatment facility uh, that lasted about a month. I, I sort of half-heartedly agreed to it. it. But it's hard when I think back about it, it's hard to say that the actual willingness was there. I ended up moving to Oregon and um, I got away from a lot of the drugs and I didn't use any drugs anymore. But one thing that I continued to do was to drink. In a lot of ways my life got better by moving out here and taking away some of those negative aspects and some of those drugs but, but it also simultaneously became the loneliest time of my life. And I tried to combat that by, by drinking more. And, I tried to socialize more, but the drinking got in the way with that. Cause see that by this point, uh, I was very much a maintenance alcoholic. I had to, I had to have a drink or I'd be sick. I convinced myself many times actually that, okay, this is my life. Uh, I just need to have alcohol. And as long as I have that, it's fine. I'll probably die young. And I guess I'll just come to terms with that because I don't know a way out. It's pretty sad that I had gotten to that point. Um, but but that was a real, that was the reality that I had to face. I was trying to be completely honest with myself about my existence and about the choices that I had made and about the choices that I was gonna continue to make. Um, was the main thing that, that got me to stop. Um, I mean, to use cliche is I, you know, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Um, it's really hard to summarize what it's actually like uh, to be in the depths of, of a devastating addiction. Um, but what happened was during that Christmas of 2015, I went back to Wyoming uh, to spend time with my parents and my family. And I think I started drinking on the plane there. And I didn't stop the whole trip and it was bad. Um, it got to be really bad and my parents were worried about me and I was worried about me. When I came back, um, I sort of doubled down on my efforts for the treatment and I worked with my counselor and we ended up getting uh, myself into the, the Carlton house. If I can get three months behind me, then I'll just have that much better of a chance of making it. And, and so I believed in myself this time and I think um, I was willing to do what it took. I, I guess that's the most important part. As I got clean, I, I picked up my guitar and I eventually took my drums out of storage and started playing them and it turns out that I'm still really passionate about it and uh, my band is called Ghost of Gatsby and uh, we are a rock band. Um, we are inspired a lot by 
90s rock and early 2000s rock, I think most specifically, but we have a little twist on that. Um, a lot of the content that we write about, and I, I'm not the lyricist of the band, but uh, broadly we talk about um, a lot of people's struggles, and, and, a, and a lot of them have to do with addiction, or a lot of them have to do with mental health issues. And now here I am, and I'm about to go to the U of O. Um, this fall I start at the U of O. I have a 4.1 GPA. Um, I wanted to have friends. Now I've got so many friends, and um, the, the desire to see what would happen in a sober life outweighed my desire for a drink at the moment. Um, and I actually just, right now, realized that that was what was going on in my head. <laughs> Um, I guess the, the biggest thing was, for me personally, I have such a, a connection with Willamette family, um, having gone through what I went through, um, having such success with it. And I felt something different with Willamette family. As I mentioned in some of my story before, I've been to other treatment centers and didn't quite have the same luck, but I felt something different with Willamette family. Some kind of connectivity with the people involved that, that just felt um, very personal 